So we're on the second league of the day and we've spun the wheel and hit Enchantress. So Enchantress is a, hmm, how would you describe it? Prison, combo, value, it's kind of in its own individual category. So this is a deck that's built around enchantment effects and cards that draw more cards via enchantment effects. So the first things to understand are we have Argothian Enchantress, two mana, oh, one shroud. Whenever you cast an enchantment, draw a card. Then you've got Scythus, two mana, one, two. Whenever you cast an enchantment, you gain one life and draw a card. And Enchantress's presence, three mana enchantment. Whenever you cast an enchantment, draw a card. So with all of these cards, every enchantment that you play will then draw you another card. So the idea is that you have at least one of these, if not more, in play, which will then be draw engines that draw you into more and more cards with all the enchantments in the deck drawing more and more cards. So then the individual enchantments themselves are, we have On Thin Ice to be this deck's version of uh, Chain to the Rocks as a way to remove enemy creatures, and Song of the Dryads, which is a way to remove enemy anything, not just creatures. We've got Abundant Growth, which cycles, fixes our lands for mana if we need to, although we probably don't. And then, of course, if you have another Enchantress effect out, then it plus that means you draw two cards for one mana. Then we've got one copy of Miri's Guile, which is a one mana enchantment that says at the beginning of your upkeep, you may look at the top three of your library and put them back in any order. So it's, it's a uh, Sensei's Divining Top that doesn't cost you mana to activate, basically. Then there's Utopia Sprawl and Wild Growth, which are the ramp cards for this deck. Then in this version, we have the Rip plus Helm of Obedience combo. So Rest in Peace is just solidly good anti-graveyard card in general, but then it combos with Helm of Obedience. And we also have Destiny Spinner, which makes our creatures and enchantments uncounterable. And if we get enough mana, it alone can kill our opponent by turning our creatures, by turning our lands into giant tramplers. We also have Finale of Devastation, which if we have enough mana can also do a similar thing, either tutoring one of our Enchantress effects or Destiny Spinner into play, or just paying a ton of mana to Finale for X's 10 plus and kill our opponent that way. So we've got Sarah's Sanctum, which is this deck's version of Gaia's Cradle, which taps for white for every enchantment we control. And then the rest of the lands are just regular green-white lands. Of course, they have to have a bunch of snow lands, so that Aunt the Nice is always on. And then one copy of Caracas. So that's the main deck. Uh, sometimes this deck can play other things. So there's been uh, Solitary Confinement was one way that you'd win, which is that you'd get Solitary Confinement out, you wouldn't be able to take any damage, and then no creature beats could kill you, and you would recoup the card disadvantage from Solitary Confinement by using Enchantress effects. You could use Sanctum Weaver as a creature version of Sarah's Sanctum. So there's other cards we could be playing, but we're not. But usually the main focus of the deck is the Enchantress cards plus a bunch of enchantments, and then this version is on the Helm combo. In the sideboard, we have Curse of Silence, an enchant player, you name a card, it costs two more to cast, and then if they ever do cast it, so they just get the mana to cast the spell, you can sack Curse of Silence to draw a card. So this, of course, can be good against Storm or just any other deck, and then if they wind up casting the spell, you can get rid of this to cycle it, and of course it's a one mana enchantment that combines with all of your enchantress effects. There's Swift Reconfiguration, which is basically Swords to Plowshares. It's not exactly that, but it basically is. And Swift Configuration also combos with Devoted Druid, so sometimes this deck will main Swift Reconfiguration and Devoted Druid, although this version is not. We've got one Plague Engineer in the side, three Force of Vigors for the Artifact Enchantment decks. There's an Emrakul. This deck can generate a lot of mana, but sometimes it just can't get through counter spells, so Emrakul is a way to do that. And then we have four copies of Elephant Grass in the sideboard. This is a one mana green enchantment with Cumulative Upkeep 1. It says black creatures can't attack you, and non-black creatures can't attack you unless their controller pays two mana for each creature they control that's attacking you. So it's a sort of a one mana ghostly prison that straight up ensnaring bridges black creatures and ghostly prisons everything else. And although the cumulative upkeep is kind of bad, we do generate a lot of mana. It can cycle itself, and it can be used as a temporary stopgap against various aggressive decks to slow them down long enough for us to find an answer or just win straight up. So that is Enchantress. Let's jump into the second league of the day. All right, round one, we're on the draw. We've got, let's see, turn one Miri's Guile to try to, to fix our draws with Abundant Growth and Windswept Heath to shuffle away if our draws are bad. Um, 
I guess it's fine. Keep. This deck is terrible against like linear combo decks like Storm, basically. So I'm going to just assume that any matchup we're against is going to be a grindy fair deck because otherwise we can't win anyway. All right, opponent ponders. We drew Destiny Spinner, which will probably be pretty solid in this matchup. So let's just run out Miri's Guile first. So Snowland, Miri's Guile. And if they want to daze this, that's fine. They are dazing it. All right. So I assume this is Delver. I believe this deck is pretty good against Delver because their Wastelands are basically useless and we have a million draw spells. They didn't have a second land. I'm just going to run out Destiny Spinner right now. All right, it resolved. Over to them. Opponent Cycles Lorien revealed. Second Volcanic. Ooh, Uncounterable Scythus, and then we can play Abundant Growth. That's excellent. So Combat, Swing with Destiny Spinner. All right, they go to 18, then we'll play Scythus. They're bolting Destiny Spinner in response, so if they have a counter spell, they can counter this on the stack, I guess. Although they have to spend two cards to do it. Yeah, Force of Will, Exiling Brazen Borrower, that's fine. So let's Abundant Growth, a land, draw a card. We drew Enchantress's Presence. All right, over to them. Fetch Scalding Tarn, Tropical Island, so it's Rug Delver, Beanstalk. All right, um, land, Enchantress's Presence. All right, that resolving is great. They don't have a main, they usually don't have a main deck way to get rid of that. I guess they can bounce it with Brazen Borrower maybe, but other than that, and now all of our enchantments are, are replacing themselves. Another Beanstalk, okay. Well, they've got their own little Enchantress's Presence over on their side. On Thin Ice, I'm not casting this without a target for it, so let's... Play a land, and then I'm going to finale for our Gothian Enchantress. So finale, X is two. Ugh, force of will, and it actually draws more cards. All right, there goes finale. Back over to them. Plays Tarn, Hooting Mandrels, draw two cards, plays DRC. All right, I'm going to thin my deck here. Let's grab another planes. Well, we're not drawing very well, so thin ice. Trigger, draw a card. All right, thin ice, get rid of Mandrels. So the only question is, do I want to song the Channeler or do I want to song Beanstalk? It's probably better to song Beanstalk. So play land, let's song a Beanstalk. Trigger to draw. We drew our Gothian Enchantress. All right. So Beanstalk, that Beanstalk at least is now a forest. And then let's play our Gothian Enchantress. Oh, come on. They've used two dazes already. All right. Days it is. Back over to them. I feel like if your opponent has already used twice half the dazes in their deck, you don't continue to play around days. Taiga, four mana, five mana. They're just going to play Fury, maybe? Yeah, Fury. They redraw off the Beanstalk. Well, we do actually have to draw pretty well here, although we have a lot of mana. So Darcy, we go to 16. Finale. Oh, man. These have been some atrocious draws, eh? All right, Finale. X is two. Done. We needed to chain a bunch of things. I'm going to search my library for um, another Argothian Enchantress, I think. Or do I just grab Destiny Spinner so that I can make a... I don't have that many enchantments, right? I've got one, two, three, and then Destiny Spinner will be four. So it's a two-turn clock with these guys. But if I'm not drawing another enchantment next turn and my play is animate a land, that's just terrible. So let's just grab a Grothian. Play a land. Go. We just have to draw more. So they play Darcy. Then swing. No blocks. We'll take nine. Go to seven. I guess I don't thin now because they maybe have two bolts. So... Let's not get got if we don't need to. All right, we need to draw an enchantment. That is an enchantment, and it is an enchantment we needed. So thin ice, trigger two, draw twice. First draw is a land, second draw is another land. Oh my god. All right, well, our draws have just been absolutely horrendous. Just crazy horrendous. Chumping Fury also seems so bad, but I guess it's better to chump Fury and then hope to chain into more stuff, because otherwise I go to one, then I can't fetch anymore, and then I'm dead to bolt. So let's get rid of a... Darcy, bolt us, surveil twice. I can't believe how bad our draws have been. Just like, it's crazy how bad they've been. All right, so we can't fetch anymore. So like, whatever. Over to them, brainstorm, swings here, block the fury. And we go to four, or one rather. All right, draw. We drew another land, Jesus Christ. All right, so dead to variants. Um, so versus them, I want swift, recon I want, yeah, swift reconfiguration. What else? Elephant Grass is okay. What's bad? I want all the removal I can get. Finale sucks. Let's cut that. Hmm. I have a, I have plenty of removal, right? I probably don't need Elephant Grass. And there's nothing else I really want to cut. So let's just run this. All right, on the play. Turn one, Miri's Guile. Turn two, Destiny Spinner. We also Sarasank them. That's pretty good. All right, keep. So Forest, Miri's Guile. Then back to them. Trop, Ponder. 
All right, Miri's Guile trigger. Two Abundant Growth and Helm is pretty good. Yeah, all right, let's keep all that. I guess I'm probably Vistaing here, right? Hmm. Yeah, let's go Vista. Obviously, they can daze us, but that's fine. Let's grab another Forest and play Destiny Spinner. All right, it resolved. Misty Rainforest. Back to us. Miri's Guile. All right, so Scythus for sure on top. So let's go Swift, Abundant Growth, Scythus. Sarah Sanctum, Tap, Scythus. Opponent fetches. They're going to bolt this in response. I can technically Swift reconfig it, and it gets to keep its abilities, but it loses its other types. But it still keeps the ability, right? So the bolt will just fizzle because it's not a creature anymore. Hmm. So they're what? They're going to bolt this, and then they're going to force Scythus. So it's more valuable for me to have Scythus on the board. So let's just Swift reconfig the Destiny Spinner. All right, so then the bolt should just fizzle, right? Yeah. And then Scythus resolves, and then we can Abundant Growth, draw two, and then draw an extra card off Scythus, and then draw off the Abundant Growth. All right, over to them. Wasteland, they're for sure hitting Sarah Sanctum. Yeah, all right. They're not killing Scythus, though. All right, so I want to keep Wild Growth as the first draw, and then Argothian Enchantress. So uh, Presence, Argothian, Wild Growth. So Wild Growth here, tapping this one, then trigger to draw. They can't counter any of our stuff either. All right, let's, com let's go to combat and attack with Scythus. They can counter this if I cast it, but let's just cast it anyway. Oh, no, it can't, right? Because it's creatures as well, not just enchantments. All right, Argothian. And so now we have two draw effects, and we're just going to outgrind them a lot. Misty Rainforest, fetch. Blue, blue, they're just going to play Murktide here. I can swift reconfig the Murktide. Yeah, Murktide. All right, so Utopia Sprawl on top. So yeah, so this, this, this. So green, Utopia Sprawl here. Triggers, always yield to these. Boom, boom, trigger name white. And then we tap this and we go swift reconfig the Murktide, draw two cards. All right, yeah, so they're conceding to that. And then I guess just run the same thing back, right? Yeah, run back the same thing. No lands as a mole. All right, so we go turn one, Utopia, turn two, and we have all these things. All right, that's fine. What am I putting back? Probably Helm of Obedience in this hand. It's the card that does the least. So put back Helm. So yeah, keep, put back Helm. Volcanic, Darcy. All right. Uh, oh, no, I can't thin ice it because Caracas is not a land. All right, so Snow, Utopia Sprawl. Are we getting dazed? Yep, yeah, dazed, of course. All right, no pay. So back to them. They didn't surveil to the graveyard. We go to 19 here. All right, so let's run out Argothian Enchantress. So Snow Plains, Argothian. All right, it resolved. Now they can't kill it. And now all of our enchantments are redraws. No blocks. They play a Tropical Island. Another Argothian. Wow. All right, so... Play Caracas, play another Argothian. Now play Thin Ice, double draws. Bolt us in response, sure. Surveil, surveil to the top. Bolt resolves, we go to 15, we draw two cards, and then Thin Ice resolves, question mark? Yeah, eat the Darcy, and over to them. So yeah, this is why Enchantress should beat Delver most of the time. Taiga, they're playing the Beanstalk. Yeah, Beanstalk, they draw a card. All right, uh, Scythus, trigger, trigger. Does this resolve? Indeed it does. All right. I can keep Caracas open to save this as well if I need to, although I don't even think I need to at this point. Hmm. Uh, wild Growth on the Forest. Triple draw. Draw, draw, draw. Like, they just can't possibly keep up with the crazy amount of card advantage we're getting. So, over to them. Scalding Tarn, fetch. Oh, Chantress Nice, what are you against now? Rug Tempo Beanstalk? Yeah, we're Rug, rug Delver with Beanstalk. Four mana. So if I Swift reconfig my Scythus, and then I play another Scythus, do they not die? Because although they're both legendary cards one of them is not a creature anymore murktide draw card sure all right end of turn swift draw three they share i know they share a name but one of them's not a creature right so shouldn't it not cancel each other out all right so land i'm actually drawing too many cards now it's crazy oh i shouldn't have played a land in case i drew sarah sanctum all right well whatever let's go tap this wild growth here draw 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 wild growth resolves then I want to get Rip on board, so let's play Rip. Trigger, trigger, trigger. Yeah, there's Sarah Sanctum. Yeah, so I shouldn't have... Uh, Rip hits the board. So let's play Destiny Spinner. Trigger, trigger, trigger. Let's play, what, another Destiny Spinner? Triggers. And then go to Combat. Swing with Scythus. And then I'm going to have to discard a whole bunch. So let's see. Discard this land, this land. Uh, Miri's Guile. On one of the two extra Scythus in my hand. How many more cards do I need to get rid of? I have 17 cards in my hand. Okay, um, 
another Scythus, uh, one of the Argothian Enchantresses, Presence, uh, Planes. Oh, I still have more cards over here. Another Presence and Song of the Dryads. All right. Technically, I guess they could have what? Brotherhood's End. So like, it's not foolproof that all this stuff's sticking around, but all right, they should be just extremely dead now if they're not doing anything. Cause then we just play Sarah Sanctum, animate our lands to be huge. All right, Sarah Sanctum, tap this and this, cast another spinner, triggers, draw a whole bunch, tap this one. It doesn't untap the land, right? Yeah, so I do have to be kind of careful with how I'm doing this. All right, yeah, so they're just conceding here. All right, on to round number two. They share a name. If you have crude Parhelion and a non-crude one, I think one of them dies. Well, because they're both, hmm. Well, they're both legendary artifacts, right? So they, they share a type besides just being legendary. According to CR, only the name and legendary matters. Legend rule. What does legend say exactly? If a player controls two or more legendary permanents of the same name when state-based actions are checked, the player chooses one of them and immediately puts the other in the graveyard. So yeah, okay, it doesn't care about what type they are. Round two on the draw. We've got turn one Utopia, turn two Enchantress effect. All right, this is fine. Our opponent's on a combo deck. I forget which one. We played them yesterday. There's a Saga. Oh, they're the uh, eight key deck, right? All right, Prismatic, Fetch. So Forest, Utopia Sprawl, name white, and then over to them. I don't want to come off as a know-it-all. I just like the precision, the preciseness of MTG rules. No, you don't. Yeah, I, I want to know what the ruling is as well. Okay, so Tomb, Ox Opal. So I could Song of the Dryads the Saga, which is probably the correct move. Fetch, let's grab another green source and then let's song this they still like to make a karn struck but at least they don't get to make two karn structs we're too slow to be able to beat that is song of the dryads a stone rain no because it turns it into a forest so it's not a stone rain oh wait no is it against sagas though it is right it becomes no it hmm because blood moon kills it right so song also kills it right doesn't it hmm i actually haven't seen this interaction before it should though shouldn't it no it apparently doesn't all right so yeah pass to them why does this not kill it, but Blood Moon does? Because it's changing the what? It's cha it's got to be changing types differently. All right, so Volta Whispers over there. Wait, does it keep the Karnstruct ability? It keeps the Karnstruct ability? You got to be kidding me. All right, well, lesson learned. Apparently, don't don't ever do that. They thought sees us. How does that work? I, I do not understand why this is different than Blood Moon, but okay. They took away abundant growth with their thought sees. Well, our opponent has a permanent making constructs every turn ability. So uh, yeah, uh, we're gonna take a ton of damage. So what can I do? I have to immediately rip uh, rip, and then the land for Helm of Obedience is the only way I can see to get out of this. We drew rip. Actually, no, even if I draw another land next turn, this still doesn't win because I, I'm one short of being able to cast and activate it. So my actual move should be to play Enchantress's Presence, I guess, and then try to draw into what I need next turn. All right, so Enchantress's Presence, Thoughtseize. Well, now they can take Rip out. No, they took Scythus. Hmm. So they make another Karnstruct, then we take 10, and then we need to kill all of them, or two of them, rather. All right, so I can play Scythus and then draw a card and then maybe get out of this. Play Scythus, draw, Miri's Guile, all right. Draw two cards. We need to draw a removal spell. That's not a removal spell. So yeah, we're dead, right? We block and then we're still dead. All right. So uh, presumably storm. So I therefore want what exactly? So on thin ice, one for one in construct tokens is just awful. So we don't want that. Uh, these are too slow. The destiny spinners don't really matter. What's more important is probably curse of silence and uh, force of vigor for sure. What else? One elephant grass in case they make a bunch of constructs. All right, let's do that. It's not a basic though, right? It just becomes a forest. Okay. All right. Well, we're on the play. Um, I wish I knew what to name. I guess probably beseech the mirror, right? All right. Keep. Maybe I just name abundant growth or just play abundant growth first. I don't know. Or Karn. Karn would be another one. I wish I could remember what was in their deck. All right. Let's just play abundant growth. So trigger wild growth. All right. Over to them. Vault of whispers. All right. So Green, wild growth here. Tap this for Scythus. Over to them. Thoughtseize. Assume they take this, right? So this doesn't strip the artifact type off of this either, right? Oh, layers. Took the second Scythus, Saga. All right, Prismatic Vista, fetch. Grab a forest. So tap this one, Utopia Sprawl this one, draw a card. 
Another Curse of Silence, all right. Utopia Sprawl, name White. Cast Curse of Silence on them, trigger draw. Let's name Beseech the Mirror. Um, tap this, Curse of Silence on them, draw. I have no clue what I'm naming on the second one. Karn the Great Creator, all right, uh, name that. Play Abundant Growth on, I don't know, <laughs> this one. Trigger, draw, all right. Then draw here, and I go to combat, swing with Scythus. Saga goes up to two. Swamp, Lotus Petal, and they're playing the ring. Okay, the ring. Oh, it stri the ring kills the, s the curses? Huh. <sighs> All right, at least we drew off of them. Then they draw off the ring. So I can song the ring? All right, so land, uh, tap this, wild growth here, trigger to draw. All right, tap this, song the ring, draw, and then the ring should lose its abilities, right? Yeah, okay. Then... Abundant Growth on this one. Drew another card, and then drew another card. Then we can play our Gothian Enchantress. All right, pass to them. Saga finally goes off. Fetches LED. Dark Ritual, and now we're just going to get stormed out. Awesome. I hate this card so much. Wish Claw. Ad nauseum. They have plenty of life to pay for it. All right, they went down to three, but they found all of this. They drew again after hitting Beseech the Mirror. What if they just died? So let's see, they've played a land already. So all they have is Chrome Mox and one mana left. So they only have two mana. They can they can wish for Dark Ritual though, right? So they can go Chrome Mox, wish for Dark Ritual. They're still going. Don't they just have the win here even if they didn't continue to add Nos? They go Chrome Mox, wish for Dark Ritual, cast, beseech, Gaia's will go off, right? All right, th there's no way they don't have it. Let's just concede. On to round number three. All right, we're on round three on the draw. This hand is... Good. Keep. Tropical Island. Delighted Halfling. All right. Let's go Utopia Sprawl. So fetch. Grab a forest. Play Utopia Sprawl. And I'm going to name another green since Sanctum is going to make a bunch anyway. Over to them. Are you playing the Helm version? Yeah. Tax us with Delighted Halfling. All right. So if I go Abundant Growth, Sarah Sanctum, play our Gothian Enchantress. All right. So Abundant Growth here. Trigger. Sarah Sanctum. Tap for two. Play our Gothian. Opponent forces it, okay. I think I'm still correct to just thin ice to hit this thing. They exiled Ponder. Scalding Tarn, fetch with the Flooded Strand, fetch with the Tarn, plays fourth Aerolingus. All right, and then they get the Monarch, unfortunately. All right, so let's go tap for green, play Argothian. Oh, I needed to play this first. Oh, that's fine. Okay, Argothian, land, fetch, green. Tap this, play Destiny Spinner. Trigger our Gothian, draw a card. All right, I can't use the white for anything else, so this fizzles. And then over to them. Mystic Sanctuary to put Force of Will back on top. Okay, the ring. So now we can't take the Monarch from them. Well, this deck is supposed to draw a lot of cards, but they're definitely doing their damnedest to beat us back. So tap, Utopia Sprawl this one, trigger to draw. Why did they take Force of Will back when I have a Destiny Spinner in play? Why not this one? All right, name green. Then we play Miri's Guile, Trigger. Ooh, Helm of Obedience, eh? So tap for a whole bunch. I guess I'm going to Thin Ice this. Thin Ice, target here. Then eat this token. Then cast Destiny Spinner. Trigger to draw. Uh, rest in peace. Trigger draw. Eat the graveyard. Cast Destiny Spinner. Draw a card. All right. Uh, fizzle, go over to the opponent. Well, we have a absolute metric ton of enchantments. They can force the helm, unfortunately. Brainstorm. Misty Rainforest. Fetch. Another ring. Okay. So always yes on Miri. Always yield. All right. What is the best way out of this? So I can't hit them this turn because of the ring. Uh, finaleing for anything doesn't really matter here, right? So it's just get some more enchantments that draw cards. So I play helm. They force it. So this one, this one, this one, I guess. I don't know. Make a metric ton of mana. Play Argothian for green, and then tap this one and this one. Play Argothian, then play another Argothian, then Thin Ice just to draw more cards. Trigger, draw, draw, draw. Then, I mean, there's there's no situation in which we can Helm and they're not just going to counter it. So let's go Enchantress. Every single card that we play is drawing four cards. All right, play a Forest, uh, cast Helm. They allowed that to resolve? Okay. So let's see. They are four-color control, basically. So I want to play, I don't even know. Okay, Emrakul, Aerolingus, Halfling, presumably I have three fairy. Um, 
curse of silence is not going to be useful. I guess I can curse and like curse through a, a force of will, maybe. Swift reconfig is kind of useful, maybe. I don't know. Finale probably sucks. Get rid of that. Let's bring in. Thin ice is also probably not very good for the most part. So let's bring in swift reconfig and I don't know, curse. This can't blow up the ring, so that doesn't matter. Thin ice in general, I just don't think is very good in this matchup. Again, depends on what they have, but I assume most of the threats are not creatures. So let's just play the curses. Although, wait, no, the ring gets rid of the curses. Oh, God damn it. All right, well, th just the nice then. All right, yeah, that's fine. Submit. All right, this is fine. Keep this. So I think I'm supposed to just not play anything here. I think I'm supposed to try to get like Destiny Spinner and decide this into redrawing. So let's just play a forest and pass. Tropical Island, and then back to us. Ooh, rip. All right, so land, fetch, go grab a plains and play Destiny Spinner. Brainstorm, flooded strand. All right, well, let's try to attack them. I do want to draw a land here, but it's way better to get Gar Argothian out. So combat, swing. All right, cast Argothian. That resolved. I can't put them having a sweeper past them either. Yeah, Terminus. Okay, there go our guys. Opponent fetches, grabs another Tundra, casts Ponder, Volcanic Island. All right, cast Scythus. And they didn't have an instant speed answer for it, although they did tap out their white mana. Brainstorm, another land. Leyline Binding, okay. We finally drew another land. So fetch, play Snow Forest, get Enchantress's Presence out. Force of Will, Exiling Lorien Revealed, okay. Opponent fetches, Mystic Sanctuary, Sanctuary's back force. And then Aerolingus, we take six, go to 12. Wait, they didn't attack? That must be a mistake on their part. All right, um, all right, so Abundant Growth, this, draw. Yeah, I just really, really need to draw more cards. So let's tap this and, actually, hang on. Tap this wild growth here, and then float, and then abundant growth this one, draw. All right, there's another land, so let's vista, fetch, grab the other planes, and then abundant growth that one. Trigger to draw, utopia sprawl. Okay, so green, sprawling, this one. And I'll just name green again, I guess. All right, over to them. So that's three, four, five, six. Take a bunch of damage here. So they obviously have force of will, so let's hmm, float, white, cast rip, rip resolves, cast helm of obedience, it gets countered, but we're not doing anything else, force a will, okay, and now we really need to draw pretty well on our next turn, because otherwise we're just dead to these tokens, all right, drawing song of the dryads, well, I guess we technically survive, so song a night token, oh, they just have another counter spell, all right, we're dead, game three, pretty sure it's all just the same, I don't know, is elephant grass better than thin ice then? Since it prevents Aerolingus from hitting us, I guess it is. Although it has cumulative upkeep, but yeah, I guess that's fine. All right, submit on the play. Ah, uh, this is fine. So keep, so land, fetch a forest, and then we'll sprawl and name white. Let's sprawl here, name white, go to them. Flooded strand, back to us. Second land is excellent. So land, fetch, let's grab another forest, then float, wild growth over here. And then float, Scythus. Abundant growth here, so we can draw two cards. We draw there, and then this resolves. Then this resolves, we draw a card here. And we're good, so pass the turn. I should have played our Gothian first, obviously. I misclicked, but we're mostly fine. Land, fetch. Yeah, so now they're gonna ley line binding this. Yep, all right. So tap this, play our Gothian. Oh, now they have Force of Will. Okay, they didn't have it before, now they have it. All right, let's cast Miri's Guile and pass to them. Mystic Sanctuary tapped. All was yes, all was yield. All right, so Scythus, so this one, then this one, then Scythus, so this, and then Scythus, cast Scythus. And then if they try to kill it, I can swift reconfig it. Oh, another Force of Will. All right, over to them. How have they Force of Willed us twice and we and they still have more cards than us? Fourth Aerolingus. All right, swift reconfig this so that they don't get the Monarch token. All right, untap Miri's Guile. Ooh, Enchantress's Presence. All right, so that one, that one, that one, and cast Enchantress's Presence. Back to them. Back to us. Oh, Scythus off the top. All right, so this... Wait, oh, I can't... I meant to go the other way. Okay, I can't even undo my order. I guess I can't. Besaju the Enchantress's Presence. Do I have to shuffle my deck? That player may search, put on the battlefield, then shuffle. So if I don't shuffle, I just draw Scythus. So Besaju resolves and then use the ability. I don't shuffle if I refuse to use it, right? So no. Yeah, okay. 
play Scythus over to them. Misty fetch prop the ring. All right. Okay, so I need to get Elephant Grass first, then Argothian Enchantress, I guess. It doesn't really matter which one I do, right? So this one, this one, this one. So then cast Elephant Grass, trigger, draw a card. Then this resolves, then we play Argothian, and then over to them. Ring, up to five cards. Isn't this just crazy? Enchantress, probably the deck that's most known for drawing tons and tons of cards. The ring alone is outdrawing us. The fairy bounce the ley line so then i have to lose a scythus and then they can ley line the scythus mm -hmm. all right miri's guile resolve okay so destiny spinner into swift reconfig so this one this one this one then we pay for elephant grass so tap cast destiny spinner trigger to draw a card and then i don't have the mana to attack to fairy immediately so if i swift reconfig my destiny spinner it means that it that my stuff is pro or my stuff retains protection, right? So, but I'm drawing a fetch land. I don't want to draw a fetch land. I guess it's fine. All right, so swift reconfig this. We draw a card. This resolves. Then play a land. And then stop in my own upkeep so that I can potentially shuffle if I don't like the Miri's Guile. Ring, they go to 12. Ring, draw more cards. Fairy plus. Plays a land. Look at this. Seven cards. This, is, this card's so stupid. How did they ever let this go to print? Casting Force of Vigor on Destiny Spinner and Swift Reconfig, okay? Oh, and Miri's Guile. <sighs> I guess I keep paying for this. So Cumulative Upkeep, pay two. And then, I don't know, let's... Miri's Guile's gone, so let's just fetch a Forest out of our deck and then draw. All right, so I can Song the Ring. So tap, 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 Song the Ring. Trigger to draw. We drew Rip. Cast Rip. Draw a card. Rip resolves. Then Vista, and then go to them. Teferi on three, they get to tick it down next turn. Elephant Grass is worth keeping around because of fourth era Lingus. So let's fetch, I guess, the planes out of our deck. Elephant Grass trigger, keep paying for it until I can't anymore. So this one, this one, this one. Did I over tap for it? Oh my god. And it won't let me back up either. All right, well, cast Enchantress's presence. Force Negation, getting rid of Dress Down. Sure, I still get to draw a card. And I can't play Destiny Spinner because of the stupid mistapping. All right, back to them. End of turn, instant speed out, fourth Aerolingus. Yeah, okay. And then they can bounce Elephant Grass with Teferi. Beautiful. Although they don't get to become the Monarch at least. All right, so we take 12, go to six. Wasteland, all of our lands are basics. How are you running Wasteland in your four color domain leyline binding Mystic Sanctuary deck? Are you kidding me? Whatever. Um, all right, tap this, tap this, cast Argothian, cast... Destiny Spinner. Trigger, trigger. So let's cast... So tap this for green. Utopia Sprawl here. Trigger, trigger. There's Helm of Obedience, although I'm one short of being able to use it. So tap, cast, Elephant Grass. Swords this, and then they'll counter Elephant Grass. Beautiful. <sighs> Force of Will. Mm -hmm. I at least get to draw. Sarah Sanctum, go. Let's go. I can Helm of Obedience if they don't have another counter. Helm of Obedience. How many enchantments do I have? One, two, three, four, five. So let's tap this, cast another rip. Draw, draw. We drew Emrakul. <laughs> Trigger. All right, Helm. Does this resolve? It does resolve. Target you. Oh my god, we won that match. All right, on to round number four. So sometimes it makes sense to have one Wasteland in your control deck if you're doing Loam Loops, but we didn't see Loam from them once. How good is this deck so far? It is the classic, you win usually against the fair decks because you just draw 10 million cards and they can't keep up and you lose to the unfair decks because you have absolutely nothing that beats storm or you know show and tell or anything else like your hands are very slow you don't have anything that really interacts on the stack or you don't even have like main deck stacks pieces all right we're on the play for round four we can't keep this because if we don't hit another land off this abundant growth then we're screwed so let's malt this is okay keep putting back I'm going to say Song. So done. And then let's go Forest, Vista for Plains, Argothian Enchantress. Forest, go. Volcanic Island, DRC. All right, so Delver. Oh, and they can daze us. I hate getting dazed so much. Whatever. Fetch, Plains, Argothian. They just never don't have the daze. They always have it. All right. By the way, I think while Force of Will is actually good, that daze is a net negative for the format. All right, let's try Argothian again. I feel like the play patterns of... 
the, the play patterns of um, Force of Will are actually good. It helps keep combo decks in check, etc. The play patterns of Days are awful. I'm fetching now in case they're running Stifle. I actually kind of love Days as somebody who plays no format where it's legal because it makes games so much more interactive. But see, it really doesn't. It just says, oh, you, you're, you're playing off curve now. It just says basically, oh, you just get hit and too bad for you. Or you have to like awkwardly play around it the whole game, which by itself is usually just worse. All right, cast Scythus, trigger to draw. They're also the Grixis version, which means, yeah, Bowmasters. At least they can't target Enchantress, but they can target Scythus, which means the moment I play anything else, Scythus is dead. Mm-hmm. I can't not play the Abundant Growth. I have to. And then they'll just kill Scythus off, and this Orc will grow huge. And they have Force of Will. Why would you force this? The moment I play anything, you just get to shoot it. Exiling Delver. All right, well, Abundant Growth. This. Draw a card. Grow the Bowmaster again. <sighs> Draw, Bowmaster, mm-hmm. And then I have to song the freaking token on my turn. Bowmasters and Ring are just cancer. They're just horrible. Bowmasters and Ring are certainly cards of all time. Yep. Ponder, so on my turn, I have to go song your token, and then the Bowmaster continues to trigger, but at least the token is now out of play, and it, they can keep growing it, but the token itself will just be a forest. We're also dying to DRC, and so like, hmm, how much time do I have? They hit us this turn for... Oh, no, we're almost dead, actually, right? Four, seven, eight. We go to four. We really, really needed to draw, like, thin ice or something. So, okay, let's go song. Oh, my God. I can't even, like... There's no way out, right? Whatever I song... Because then the DRC is still active. So I have to hit, like, runner, runner, thin ice. No, I only have four mana. So I go song. It pings us because... And then DRC is lethal, and this is lethal. So I have to song this, have thin ice for this... We go to two. This hits us. I have to chump it, and then I have to have another removal spell for this. All right, song this thing. All right, we're dead. Okay, um, DRC, so, or Delver, rather. So this thing, Plague Engineer for the Bowmasters. Elephant Grass, I guess, is an acceptable card to have in this matchup. I don't want to cut too much. I'm definitely cutting Finale. Helm can get countered, but I don't want to cut it completely. Song of the Dryads is such an expensive removal spell. It's three mana to get rid of something, and then they still have a land. Get rid of that. Yeah, that's fine. Let's let's run that. All right. On the play, this is not good at all. We have five lands, no enchantress effects. No, not even ramp or anything. Yeah, mole. All right, this is way better. Keep this and enchant and so let's see. Elephant Grass is the worst card in the hand, at least to start with. So let's put that away done and then we're going to go abundant growth into rip into presence abundant growth draw over to them volcanic ponder double rip all right fetch green white rip rip resolved all right eat the graveyards over to them flooded strand bobble they're not even activating it eh? all right let's play around days let's play enchantress's presence it resolves all right wild growth on here tap for green trigger Fetch. Is it the stupid Bowmasters? Looks like it. Mm-hmm. All right. Bowmasters. Then we draw. Then Bowmasters triggers again. So I've come to realize this. It's not just Bowmasters. It's also like Shieldred and whatnot. I think I hate any card that punishes you for drawing cards. And it's because... Uh, and there's Wasteland, of course, to get rid of Sanctum. It's because it any card that punishes you for drawing cards makes it harder to actually find answers to them. So it's like, you know, let's say your opponent has a Shieldred, right? And you don't have an answer for Shieldred, but you have a card that draws cards, but now the card is bad because now you have to draw. All right, well, I have to... I get double pinged every single time I play anything, so whatever. Destiny Spinner, and then I draw, and then the Bowmasters go off. Mm-hmm. I can't just not play stuff here, so I have to find answers to this stuff. Destiny Spinner... And they have four, so okay, whatever. I'm over this. So were you pro banning Hull Breacher and EDH? Yeah, Hull Breacher's stupid. I don't know why on all of those cards that say your 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 opponent cannot draw extra cards or your opponent gets punished for drawing extra cards, why do they work with wheels? Just blame it on Commander. That's what the MTG community does anyway. Seriously, though, I assume they made more draw hate because it's so potent in EDH. Well, then make that stuff not legal in Legacy or other formats. Anyway, match number five, we're on the play. The problem is, again, it's that... Uh, we don't have green mana. The problem is you can't now, now your draw spells don't work anymore. You can't draw into whatever you need to actually answer the opponent. All right, keep this. This hand's super awkward. Uh, let's see. The most redundant card in the hand is Thin Ice. Also Song of the Dryads. All right, let's put that back. 
So I'm not going to fetch with this because I don't know if I need to have white to thin ice something. Mountain. Petal. Are we about to get Blood Mooned? Goblin Welder. Oh, so Painter for the first time. This many leagues in, we're finally facing Painter for the first time. All right, well, that works. So Fetch, Forest, Wild Growth, Sanctum, Tap, Thin Ice here. Ice your Welder. I love getting hit by Narset plus Winds of Change on turn two or three. Yeah, Narset plus Days Undoing. Notion Thief plus whatever. Hull Breacher plus whatever. It's such bullshit. Like, what are you supposed to do? I guess just, it's basically just saying, if you can't win before I deploy this, you lose the game. Goblin Engineer. We do have an answer to this as well, so that's nice. Bowmasters is probably the most obnoxious out of all of them because it's modern legal, it's the cheapest one, and it's good regardless of whether your opponent is playing extra card draw, and it kills stuff, and like, it's just so horrible in so many ways. Phyrexian, Dragon Engine, and they had the mana left over to play Grindstone. Well... I have to activate this and then play Argothian Enchantress and just hope they can't win. So tap. Actually, hang on. I can go... If I go Argothian, then I don't have the mana to play Thin Ice and Rip in the same turn. This is five mana to get back, right? So the Engineer is pointless if they don't have anything to get back with it. So I may as well just go Argothian, Rip. All right, so Argothian, Rip, Trigger, Draw. All right, and we have Thin Ice. Although at this point, I don't even want to Thin Ice this, but... I probably should just to draw a card. I don't know. Fetch. We're just dead to a painter next turn anyway, so let's just do it. The nice trigger. All right, hit them, and back to their turn. If they've got painter, we painter and another land, we lose. There's another land. There's painter. All right, we're dead. Why are they not just doing it now? Rip doesn't shut off grindstone, right? Why are you waiting till my upkeep? All right. Uh, Swift Reconfiguration doesn't even work because the Painter retains its ability, so I need Curse of Silence and Force of Vigor. Finale's too slow and doesn't do jack. Uh, Thin Ice also doesn't really do jack because they can just win on their own turn and it's sorcery speed. It's only good for hitting Welder, and we already have three rips, so let's just cut that. Song of the Dryads can actually answer a Grindstone at the very least. Uh, they don't even run counter spells, so Destiny Spinner isn't as important. All right, let's do that. Um, this is fine. Keep. I do think I'm going to Abundant Growth on turn one because I may not have the time to wait around. So fetch, forest, Abundant Growth, trigger, draw, a land, go. Great Furnace, pedal, engineer. Engineer's for Damping Sphere. Okay, land, fetch, forest, play, Argothian Enchantress. Back to them. Shuts off Sarah Sanctum and prevents us from like chaining a ton of spells back to back. That still seems weak. It still seems like they should just go for their own combo, right? Sack Furnace to put Damping Sphere into play. Okay. Maybe their hand just like sucks and they just need time. Is it still an artifact when I song it? It isn't, right? So land. I actually don't want to give them more mana though. But at the same time, I don't want to do nothing. So all right, let's just song the Damping Sphere, I guess. Trigger, draw a rip. All right, we've got our combo. So now we just need two turns to kill them. Urza Saga. Three mana. Casting Fable the Mirror Breaker, attacking, no blocks. Ooh, Scythus. Okay, so land, play Scythus, draw a card, and then we'll rip, draw two cards, and then Engineers shut off, and then back over to them. And then we win next turn with Helm. So Saga up to two, Fable. They exiled Fable and Red Blast. Why are the forests glitching? D not sure. Swing, no blocks here. I mean, I guess I could block Engineer, right? All right, block here. One, two, bounces off the one, two. Welder. All right, so this should win. Helm. All right, we won. And then same deal, passing it back. What? To what degree is it useful to kill welders? Maybe it's better than Destiny. Like, just keep one Destiny spinner in, keep one of these in. Hmm. Yeah, all right, submit. Swift does not deactivate the welders. Oh, no, no, it doesn't. Right, obviously. All right, so I'm all... Okay, this is fine. What am I binning? Hmm. One of the lands. All right, done. Mountain. Welder. Curse of Silence. Well, let's play this. Let's Utopia Sprawl and name green. And then over to them. Second Mountain. Lotus Petal. Goblin Engineer. Oh, they can grab anything and they can weld it, eh? Painter. Yeah. All right. So now I'm not sure what to do. They can weld it at instant speed. So I guess I just curse them and name... I just curse them and name Grindstone, I guess. All right, Saris. So Argothian... Then this, tap, curse, them, draw a card, draw, resolve, curse, naming, grindstone. All right, over to them. Mox Opal. 
They didn't bother to weld at end of turn either. Cast Grindstone, but they don't have the mana to activate it. All right, I guess I'm going to... Do I want to tap? Do I want to get rid of this to draw a card, or do I want to leave it around to Sarah Sanctum? Right. So how much mana do I have next turn? I go fetch land, play Utopia Sprawl, and then I have one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm one short of being able to Helm combo. Although since Grindstone is in play, I can no, I can't song it because I just weld it in response. So hmm. I go Song, they go in response, weld it, get Painter Servant back into play, and then they just weld the next thing. So I have to find an answer for Welder. All right, let's draw. Another Helm of Obedience is not good. Hmm. All right, Vista, Fetch, Forest, tap this one, Sprawl here, Trigger, Draw. Not anything that matters. So then this hits and we name Green. We're just dead, right? Because now I go Song, Targeting, Grindstone, they weld it into Painter Servant, so two, I have to, f oh no, so I can play it and make triple white, or I can just make white and then make this here, cast song and leave green and white open, depending on whatever it is that I hit. All right, so let's do that. Song of the Dryads, targeting, yeah, grindstone, doesn't matter. Target grindstone, green, white, trigger, draw, then they weld it. Mm -hmm. They're welding back Lotus Petal. Okay, then this fizzles. Okay, wild growth, target, draw. So they have to weld both of them. Oh, so they can welder, engineer, welder, engineer, get back painter servant, get rid of, I guess, lotus petal, or no, get rid of mox opal, right? And then untap, and they have to find another artifact. So I'm not technically dead. So curse, target, trigger. Those are some horrible draws. Oh, what am I naming? So they go end of turn, engineer welds the opal into, or no, engineer welds one of these two, into one of these two. Then they untap and they still need three mana, right? So they have to either play an artifact or they have to play a third land. So I should just name a, any zero mana artifact so that they can't potentially get opal online. So a second opal doesn't matter. So then the last card I should name is another petal. What else do they have that costs zero? Just Lotus Petal, right? That's it. All right, let's name Lotus Petal. All right, over to them. They didn't weld. Okay, now they have a third land. Why are they just not welding? Welds out Grindstone, three mana, activate Grindstone, and then weld in response. Okay. And then weld the Grindstone in response. Got it. Yep. All right, we're dead. So lame. All right. What was our next draw? Not even drawing another enchantment. Incredible. All right. Well, uh, we died twice to just drawing absolutely nothing. Two different matches. Other than that, uh, yeah, what I said before, this deck is absolutely abysmal against any any combo decks, basically. You just can't beat combo decks. Like, game one, it doesn't have the speed to outrace combo decks, and it has nothing to stacks them unless their combo is built around the graveyard via Rest in Peace. So unless they're like Reanimator or Dredge, it just can't beat any combo deck game one. And then game two, things don't get much better when all you have is essentially Curse of Silence, and that's it. Uh, yeah, the deck has problems, and I think before you could have justified playing it saying well it's a deck that has good matchups and bad matchups but now the main game plan of your deck is drawing lots of cards with presence argothian and scythus and that is a horrible game plan against bow masters and since bow masters is in literally every single black deck it just winds up being horrible against literally every single black deck other than storm storm's the only deck that doesn't play bow masters so yeah i don't think i can recommend it the deck did not feel good even the decks that it's supposed to be good against the fair decks it didn't feel like amazing in those matchups either and sometimes you just straight up like brick on enchantments like th if you don't have one of your enchantress effects in play the deck is just horrible so yeah that is enchantress <laughs>